as Apple shifts its focus to AI, another acquisition in the area. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Apple has been a laggard in the AI arms race that has engulfed big tech over the last year, year and a half. But that seems to all be changing. Today, we're going to talk about a new acquisition from the company first reported by Bloomberg. And then we're going to check in to see what the state of what we know about Apple's AI efforts is. First of all, the company that Apple has acquired is called Darwin AI. And this purchase was made earlier this year before any of the big changes, which came just a couple of weeks ago. Bloomberg characterizes Darwin AI as having developed AI technology for visually inspecting components during the manufacturing process. It has customers across a range of industries. However, what potentially caught Apple's eye might be a technology that they've developed to make AI systems both smaller and faster. An Intel blog from back in 2020 describes some of what they were working on. They write, as a student pursuing a doctorate in systems design engineering at the University of Waterloo, Alexander Wong didn't have enough money for the hardware he needed to run his experiments in computer vision. So he invented a technique to make neural network models smaller and faster. Said Darwin AI's CEO Sheldon Fernandez, We build up a very sophisticated understanding of a neural network, and then we use AI a second time to generate a new family of neural networks that's as good as the original, a lot smaller, and can be explained. One of the examples they gave, an automotive customer of Darwin AI, was troubleshooting an automated vehicle with a strange tendency to turn left when the sky was a particular shade of purple. Darwin AI's solution, which it calls generative synthesis, helped the team recognize how the vehicle's behavior was affected by training for certain turning scenarios that had been conducted in the Nevada desert, coincidentally when the sky was that purple hue. Now, when you take Darwin in that light, all of a sudden this acquisition starts to make a lot more sense. A big part of the presumption last year when Apple wasn't diving into AI was that part of the reason might be the company's preference for running software on device rather than relying on the cloud. Companies like Google, Amazon, and Microsoft are, of course, all competing for cloud business. But for both privacy and performance reasons, Apple likes to do things on your mobile phone, in your laptop. There has been a steady push, not just from Apple, but from others as well, to make AI models that can actually run on device without relying on the cloud. And to the extent that Darwin AI helps that process, you can see how they would become a valuable acquisition. Alexander Wong, who's the AI researcher from the University of Waterloo that we were just discussing, joined Apple as a director in the AI group as part of the deal. When asked about the deal, an Apple representative said only that it, quote, buys smaller technology companies from time to time. So that is the new news, but let's talk about what has been happening. One of the biggest updates we got was from two weeks ago, when Apple pulled the plug on its electric car project. On the one hand, this represented a ton of sunk costs for Apple. The company is estimated to have spent more than $10 billion over the course of 10 years on this initiative. On the flip side, there have long been many skeptics of this particular work, and so even beyond the fact that it seemed like they were rededicating resources to AI, Wall Street was excited for them to not have their focus over on cars. But it was indeed AI that seems to have been the biggest beneficiary of the switch, with many of the 2,000-person team working on Project Titan shifting over into those generative AI efforts. Pretty soon after this, Apple CEO Tim Cook also started talking about AI a lot more. The way that Petapixel described it on March 4th was that in the blink of an eye, Apple is all in on AI. They write, In just a month, Apple went from basically only ever mentioning AI in passing to shifting into high gear as CEO Tim Cook spoke twice about the company's endeavors there within three weeks. In early February, Cook said, Our MO has always been to do the work and then talk about the work and knock it out in front of ourselves. And so we're going to hold to that as well. But we have got some things we're incredibly excited about that we'll be talking about later this year. However, soon after, in a shareholder meeting, Cook said that the company was planning on, quote, breaking new ground in generative AI this year, calling generative AI, quote, another technology we believe can redefine the future. Cook said, we believe it will unlock transformative opportunities for our users when it comes to productivity, problem solving, and more. But it's not just statements from Cook. When the company released its new MacBook Air, which is powered by the M3 chip, they dedicated a chunk of the press release specifically to artificial intelligence. Apple said in that release, with the transition to Apple Silicon, every Mac is a great platform for AI. Leveraging incredible AI performance, macOS delivers intelligent features that enhance productivity and creativity, so users can enable powerful camera features, real-time speech-to-text, translation, text predictions, visual understanding, accessibility features, and much more. They pointed to apps like Copilot, Canva, Adobe Firefly, CapCut, GoodNotes, and Pixelmator as apps that can use AI in the MacBook Air, and concluded with the argument that the M3 chip makes the MacBook Air, quote, the world's best consumer laptop for AI. After this announcement, Fast Company wrote a piece called Apple Just Hinted at Its AI Plans and They Could Be Game Changing. They make the same point that Apple has significantly shifted its tune, given that it's now marketing against AI, and speculates on what AI features might be coming. The first they discuss is the one that most people are anticipating and desperately waiting for, which is an update to Siri. They write, 
When it comes to generative AI, the most obvious use case and the place where it's desperately needed is in Apple's voice assistant, Siri. Once the pace setter for natural language processing, Siri is now more than a decade old, and in terms of its capabilities and comprehension, it still pales in comparison to other voice assistants that came after it. Recently, a machine learning researcher at Apple was tweeting about new smaller model performance, leading tech evangelist Robert Scoble to retweet that person saying, how do you hype people up for future Siri without mentioning Siri? Dag Kitlas, the co-founder and CEO of Siri, responded, Siri will do some cool new things in 2024, then accelerate and become a real force in the AI arena. Apple is uniquely positioned to enable new, useful, and unexpected LLM use cases. So again, we have notoriously tight-lipped Apple starting to actually hype things up in the context of a Twitter conversation. Other ideas about what might be coming include, as Fast Company writes, system-wide textual generative AI could be used to summarize documents, emails, and long text messages. They point to Apple Photos and iMovie that could be updated for AI. But the big one, they say, is the idea of a chatbot that lives on the device, not in the cloud. They write, If Apple's publicly available paper is any indication, the company may be further along than its competitors when it comes to finding ways for our everyday devices to run these complex AI tools locally. Apple's paper states, We believe as LLMs continue to grow in size and complexity, approaches like this work will be essential for harnessing their full potential. They conclude, If Apple can enter the AI arms race while delivering unrivaled privacy and speed due to its chatbot and other advanced AI tools living on a user's device, it will give the company a giant leg up over its competitors, something they likely won't be able to match due to most Android phones and Windows PCs lacking chips that can equal the power of the iPhone A17 series or the Max M3 series. Right now, we are still mostly in a mode of guessing. What's clear is that Apple has shifted its focus, its attention, and frankly, that they have the resources to compete here, even if they're a little bit slower out of the gate. Certainly, I will be listening to every rumor and interesting new bit of news that comes up, and we'll share them with you here as they become available. For now, however, that is going to do it for the AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.